Good afternoon, everybody. It is Ashley Fields with Yard Art R Us. I didn't turn my volume down here. Uh, good afternoon, y'all. We are going to be working on our interchangeable truck pieces. So last week we did the truck. Today we're doing the sunflowers, the flag, and the flamingos. So let me get uh, my comments pulled up and get this shared where I need to get it shared to. Here we go. Hi, Debbie. How are you, my dear? My post. Hi, Carla. I don't know why it won't let me. Um... Debbie, can you share for me? I'm trying to, and even on my iPad, it doesn't give me the option to share anywhere other than on just this page. So, all right, y'all. <clears throat> let me, I did, I've been, this is, I've kind of got on a little bit late today because I started to get to work on some of these for the sake of time, I did half of it because if I'm doing three of these at the same time, honestly, y'all, it would probably take an hour and a half, at least, maybe two hours. Uh, so I kind of painted some of it, uh, but I left enough together that we could, you could still see how every little part of the process works. Hi, Anita. How are you, my dear? So glad you're here. All right. We're going to start with the sunflower. So I wanted to show you. I just painted some of it. I'm gonna put these next to each other. Cause I wanna show you the one that I just painted, um, look up close at your petals. I used a script liner on this one that I just painted. I realized after I used a script liner that here on my sample, I did not use a script liner. I actually used a round tip brush like this. And so if you look up close, it's subtle differences, but it is different. This side is script liner and this side is round tip. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually go back to the round tip on uh, this half of that sunflower so that you can see the difference between using a script liner to do your detail work and using a round tip brush to do your detail work. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that. Hi, Paula. Hi, Rita. How are you, ladies? All right, y'all. We're going to hop into it. So we're going to do our sunflower first, then we'll move into the flag and the flamingos. So basically what I started with was uh, one coat of white as the base. And then I came in. The reason I did white, y'all, is because if you're ever using yellow to paint with, yellow does not go on very well without a white underneath it. So that white kind of helps that yellow to pop. Uh, Debbie, yes, you could use a rake brush. Definitely could. So I came in and did that light yellow right here. The center, I used nutmeg as the base. The base brown is nutmeg. Right here, I did some shading brown. And really, I just got honestly taken away with my paintbrush. That was something I probably should have waited on. Uh, but I really got that done so that I could come in and do that yellow dots so that we could do kind of the finish work over top of here. So what I'm going to do first, I'm actually, I like how I came in right here with that shading yellow all the way around the petal. So I'm going to start with that. So we're going to start with our script liner and then we're going to switch and use a round tip brush. So on this sunflower, the colors that I like using we're gonna use um, camel, we're gonna use shading yellow, we're gonna use shading brown, and then we've got nutmeg. So it's kind of a, you know, a little uh, mixture of several different colors that I think really are what brings this to life. So first thing I'm gonna do is just get these petals. These are already etched into uh, your pattern. I'm just gonna kind of define them a little bit by taking this script liner and some of the shading yellow and just kind of giving myself that defined outline of each petal. The reason I'm doing this first is by the time I come in here with all this detail work, uh, if I tried to bring this on top at the end, it would really kind of cover up some of that work that I want to shine through. So, y'all, I have my music on in the background. If it's too loud, y'all let me know when I can turn it down. I've been so stuck on um, Lauren Daigle. She's a Christian um, artist, and I just absolutely adore her music. And I have been just listening to her Pandora station, and I just cannot get enough of it. Paula, 
uh, and Carla, I'm so glad y'all are here. Thank y'all for coming to hang out. I know this is uh, my second time live today. Y'all got two lives from me yesterday. You got two lives today. And tomorrow I'm taking off and going to the water park with my daughter and her friend. So I figured, yeah, let's get these done. And then on uh, Friday, it, it might be Saturday, but more than likely I'll be back on Friday and we're gonna start doing our Christmas stuff. So uh, Friday, we're gonna actually do the new whimsical stockings. Those are the stockings that I did with plaid, stripes, polka dots, all that good stuff. Okay. I just started by um, kind of outlining those petals with shading yellow. Now I'm putting that script liner up and I might have to play with these round tip brushes because when I did this sample, I did it a while back. So, see, that's more of a fine tip. That's not even, I think this was really a filbert. I don't know, y'all. I have so many of them. Let me, let me just start messing with it, and we'll see. We'll see what's going to work. All right, I'm going to start with camel as my base. I want to show you this again right quick up close. If you look in the background of each petal, you see that camel is that first color that comes out the longest. That second color is shading yellow. It's a little bit shorter than the camel. And this third color coming out that's really short, that is shading brown. I think that's what makes these sunflowers look so good is it's layered with different colors. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna, let's see, I don't know. I don't know what brush I'm gonna use. I think I'm gonna use this one. This is the number two crafter's choice. And I got this camel paint. I only have a little bit in here. It's kind of watered down just a little bit. Let me see. I think I like this one. Okay, we're gonna use this brush. So basically I'm loading in that camel and then I'm almost offloading. I don't have a whole lot on that brush. So I'm basically gonna set it down right here on this CNC line and just really gently pull it outward. Y'all, this is one of those things, have your cup handy. You're gonna really dip into that paint quite a bit because if you have too much on here, you're gonna create thick lines. I don't want to create thick lines. So I almost kind of dip that brush back in the paint, just the tip of it, uh, about every three to four strokes. So I set that brush down and I just very lightly pull it out. This is a zero pressure, meaning I'm not putting a lot of pressure down on that hand. I'm just allowing what that paint, that paint that is in my brush to just come out. That's all I'm doing. I don't know if y'all can really see that camel yet. I know it's kind of light on here. And I'm just gonna continue this same exact thing. So I'm almost making like a, little apostrophes, open, open commas, if you would. And I basically, I'm just kind of curving them. So on one side, I kind of curve it outward, or curve it inward, excuse me. And then when I get to about the middle, I flip and I curve the other side into the center. Can I show y'all what that's looking like so far? You're really gonna use, hi Roberta, you're gonna use the same exact technique with every single color. The only difference is that every time I'm doing this, the first color, I'm doing long strokes. The second color, I'm gonna do strokes that are a little shorter. My last color, I do really short strokes. And that is so that you can see that layering of um, each color so that you can really see it all popping through. I think it's, um, I want to say it's Victoria. I would have never, uh, Victoria, I think she did a tutorial. Maybe she, maybe it's her sunflower tutorial. And she used camel. And I, whenever she was doing that, I was like, man, I never would have thought about that. That would have just never crossed my mind to use camel. Uh, but the end result was just so gorgeous. So I love getting to uh, watch other people paint and just learn and practice what they show. So this is one of those things of picking colors. This is uh, based on Miss Victoria and all of her knowledge. I absolutely love learning from her. And y'all, the fun thing about getting uh, or doing these sunflowers is that because it is layered, 
like half of these stripes um, or strokes, I'm like, oh, that looks kind of funky. Uh, but the good thing is we're gonna come back over top with more colors. So if it looks a little funky here and there, it'll get covered. Let me show you what that looks like so far. So that's just camel. Y'all, this side I am using a uh, crafter's choice. I don't even, I think it's a filbert tip. Um, it's a number two. It's very, very small. Notice how short your bristles are. So look at what those strokes are looking like. This side, these strokes were done with a uh, script liner. So it's not a huge difference, but by the time we get to these short little brown strokes, you're gonna really be able to see the difference between the brush that I chose to use today and the script liner. Uh, Carla says she loves the flag. Carla, we're gonna do the flag next. The flag is so fun to paint. I'm not even gonna wash out my brush. I'm just gonna leave that camel in there. All right, now we're gonna switch and we are going back to uh, shading yellow. I really don't feel like I need to wash the brush out. That camel's kind of light, so we're gonna rug it out. Basically, y'all, I'm just kind of like, I dip the, the brush in there and then I offload over here on the side. And then just get a little bit on the tip. Now, these strokes, I'm gonna purposely go shorter than the previous ones. I made those uh, camel strokes longer because I want those poking out at the end. Give me a few minutes. Let me get a couple of these petals done and I will show you what this is looking like. Uh, making this sh shading yellow just a little bit shorter. Y'all, what is everybody up to today? I have to say I'm jealous. My parents uh, packed up and went down to Galveston today and they said they're unplugging for a couple days. Uh, today's my dad's birthday and then Saturday is my mom's birthday. And so they decided to just take a couple days off and they're gonna go swim and get massages and just relax. So I hope that they have a great time so it'll kind of be me doing all the rest of the lives this week so that they can have some, you know, little vacation time here. Let me show you so far. I need a couple more swipes. Notice how that shading yellow, it's not as long as the camel. Your camel is long strokes. Your shading yellow is about medium length strokes. And then the third color, the brown, we're gonna come with, it's gonna be even shorter strokes. This is um, kind of how I've been doing um, sunflowers lately, and I just really love this technique. Again, as I'm loading this brush, I don't have very much paint on here. I don't want a lot of paint on here. And when I'm setting that brush down, I'm almost kind of flicking it. Flicking it outwards, very light, no pressure. Oh, this is just so cute. Turn it. Um, I'm just already loving this. Such a difference. And I can see a big difference between using uh, this, this brush as, a, as opposed to my um, script liner. I just think it looks way better. All right. I've got that camel at the bottom. Then I went to shading yellow. And now we're going to grab our shading brown. Shading brown is that same color that I have right here on the inside of my um, petals on the center of my flower. Again, I did not intend to actually do that before the live, but um, sometimes my paintbrush and I, we just go a little overboard and go a little far, and I didn't mean to. So, hi Christina, how are you? All right, y'all, I'm sticking with that same Crafter's Choice brush, and I'm just switching over to shading brown now. Now this one, I'm gonna kind of load that paint up and just fill in this crack for me right quick. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because some of that paint I'm putting in this crack that my CNC etched, or I'm calling it a crack, but it's a line. Uh, that's some of, gonna be some of that paint that I end up pulling through onto my petals. All right, now I'm just gonna use what uh, paint I have in my brush. So I did those camel stri striped, ugh, I could not talk, strokes about this long. I did that shading yellow about this long and I'm gonna try to keep my uh, shading brown even shorter. Y'all, this is like eyelashes, very, very light. Notice this entire time, I've still not even reloaded paint into my brush. That's the exact reason that I came and did that, uh, just kind of cleaned up that little line between the center and that petals, is so that I could just use that, that paint that's already on there and I'm not having to load this brush anymore. So very light, kind of just doing light commas and just flicking that brush through, pulling that brush through. Nothing too hard. So when I'm on the outside of the petal, I am kind of curving it inward. And then when I get to about the middle, I'm curving it. Uh, I kind of flip directions and start curving that side towards the center. Curve it towards the center, get to the center. Curve it back towards the center. I'm just going to keep on going all the way around. Still have not loaded more paint in my brush simply using what's already uh, down for me. Now over here, it's getting dry. Just dab more paint in there and then just use that paint that's already there. Now y'all, look at the difference side by side between the Crafter's Choice uh, Filbert Tip Brush and Script Liner. So Filbert Tip Brush on this side, Script Liner on this side. I prefer the Filbert Tip. How cute is that though y'all? Luckily it's not that big of a difference that I need to go repaint one side. Uh, but I wanted you guys to see your brush choice on what you decide to use can make a big difference on what that end result's gonna look like. These are almost more um, wispy, more defined and profound right where that um, stroke starts and then it tapers off a lot better. So beautiful. All right, now uh, on the center. So I went ahead and already painted these dots in the center yellow, obviously. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have a dry, let me grab a brush from over here that I wanted to use. I don't even know where these came from, but my husband found these. Um, in our old house, we bought a woodworker's estate sale, so we got a lot of random stuff. And he's got this container of these little brushes and these are really hard uh, water bristle brushes. I think that Zach says that you could use them to like uh, put glue and stuff when you're like gluing wood together and making furniture, I don't really know. But they're very hard bristles. I would never use it for actually painting, but I'm gonna use it just for a little dry brush almost kind of look right here in the center of these flowers. So I, or your polka dots in the center. So those polka dots are light yellow. So I'm gonna go to that shading yellow I'm just dipping just the tip of that brush. And I'm really just dabbing it down and allowing that paint to come upward into my bristles. Sorry, y'all, I got a little close on there. Again, this brush is very, very, very hard. So if you have like an old brush laying around that isn't good for painting anymore because it's hard and it's got a lot of dried up paint in it, that's a perfect brush. 
uh, to do a little bit of dry brushing. All right, so I got that paint brought up, and at this point I just literally dab it up and down on top of my uh, circles. Just kind of bringing in a little bit of that uh, shading yellow. I don't want it to be dark, I just want it to be a little bit of color. Almost adding like a texture. That one got a little dark. Good thing about paint, I can wipe it if it's still wet. Redo. Can you guys see that? So difference between plain yellow and then yellow with a little bit of uh, shading yellow dry brushed on top. We're gonna do that same exact thing over here on this side. Get a little bit more paint, use this lid to just bring that paint upward into those bristles. Just a little detail y'all, but I just think it adds a little more personality. Ta -da. There you go. Now, um, whenever we get done and we start to do highlights, I'll pick this one back up and add a little bit of highlights. But as far as the actual painting of my sunflowers, I'm done. I love the way that it looks. It's perfect. I'll come in and bring a little bit of white in over here on this outside of the petal and kind of bring that white downward into the petal. Uh, when we do some highlights, but there is your uh, sunflower for your interchangeable truck. I'm gonna move this one aside and let's grab our flag. Y'all, for the sake of time, I painted most of it, okay? I left some stripes off because I want you to see, I want you guys to see what I, how I do the stripes. Also right here, can you guys see, I got that red I accidentally got that red pulled over on the white and I wiped it off, but I was about to touch it up before I went live. I said, no, I'll touch it up with you guys and just show you. I, have, I make boo-boos all the time and uh, we can fix it lickety split. I also left a star off so that we can do that together. So my flag, I did two coats of white as my base. Then I came in and I added a brilliant blue up here and red on the stripes. And then my pole is just light gray. Uh, with the exception of using a mop brush to put the blue down, everything else on this thing is done with a script liner. So, uh, before I actually grab my script liner, let us get a shading. I'll take that back. We do one uh, mop brush for getting the blue down, and then we do one shader for shading the blue. Everything else is done with a script liner. Hi, Fonda. How are you? All right. I'm just getting the, I have a number 12 right here I had in my water. I'm just kind of drying it out a little bit. Um, because I have Brilliant Blue as my base, actually, let me, I'm not, I can't remember if I'm Windexed. And this has been outside, so let me Windex. If not, I'm going to get really frustrated when I get paint on here and it's separating. Okay. The reason I Windex, in case if anybody's new, we use exterior latex house paint. And so we have found that the paint really likes to separate on us uh, in between like coats. And so uh, we just Windex it and use like a microfiber uh, to wipe off that Windex. The reason I use a microfiber is because the, um, if you use like a regular rag, like a kitchen rag or anything like that, the, the, the fibers, the cotton gets left behind and stuck on top of your CNC etched lines. And then when you're coming in with your script liner, you're dealing with the fibers getting left behind um, off of a rag. So I don't even mess with rags anymore. We just do all microfiber. All right, so I just got navy blue. My navy blue was really watered down because I was actually using this to uh, outline some beards on a gnome. And so uh, it was just too watered down, so I had to add just a little bit more paint. So as far as this blue goes, I just kind of just do a little bit of perimeter shading. Nothing much. Lana says, hi, love the American flag in the truck in the background. Thank you, my dear. So that truck we painted last week, 
on a live. I painted that last week for you guys. And then today we're just doing three of the interchangeables. I want to say there's seven total, but I'm kind of doing them as the seasons go. So right today we're doing sunflower flamingo flag because I think those will be able to, you know, put out during summer. Next month, meaning really tomorrow starts next month. So July, we're going to do the Christmas tree because we're doing Christmas in July. And then um, August, we'll start doing fall stuff. So we'll do the pumpkins and the leaves that'll go in the truck. I'm just going to hit this navy blue. Try to get it to dry a little faster for me. Because once I start getting that strip liner moving on here, it'll go pretty fast to where I'll be ready to uh, get this whole thing outlined. Lucky for me, that navy is drying really quickly. I've got a very low humidity in here right now, but it's only 55 humidity, so I've got stuff drying really quick. That's nice. All right. Now, uh, before we can do any outlining on here, let's go ahead and finish our stripes together. And then I'm going to have to touch up my stars where that shading or that navy blue came over top and I'll do that star. And then really this just needs to be outlined. So all of these stripes I actually did with this script liner, number four, royal gold script liner. And whenever I'm using a script liner, y'all, I water down that paint. Water it down, water it down, water it down. And that's just so that I can get long, fluid brush strokes. I need to add some more red. Let me show you guys. Here's my water. I'm dripping water everywhere. I'm just kind of get this mixed up. Um, anytime I'm using that script liner, I want my paint about the consistency of cream, whipping cream. So I definitely thin that out quite a bit. That is also because my paintbrushes are broken in. If you have newer paintbrushes, you probably won't need that much water added. Um, so if you're new or you're using new brushes, just start with a couple drops of water and um, see if that's helpful. If it's still too thick, you can always add more water. Hey, Hank Kel, how are you? Y'all, uh, did, did you guys catch our sneak peek live last night? So we showed you guys all of the patterns that we're going to be doing for Christmas in July. And um, my uh, Aunt Kel, we, we call the ants in my family ain't. So my Aunt Kel, uh, we actually showed one of her um, wreaths. She's doing a wreath party at our uh, store in Pearland next month. I think it's August 26th or 28th, I can't recall. I know it's a Saturday at two o'clock. And so uh, Mary and I are gonna go as guests and have fun and enjoy learning to make a wreath. It'll be fun. All right, y'all, whenever I'm doing these stripes, I'm using a script liner simply because these are so, uh, these lines are very, very close together. You don't even, some of them might be about an inch wide, but most of these are a lot smaller than an inch wide, maybe even smaller than a half inch wide. And so for me, it's just easier to use a script liner. So I basically, I have that paint watered down pretty well. And then I kind of just load it on that brush and I start to set it on that piece. And I set that brush down in those crevices that are etched out for me. Once I set it in that crevice, I just pull it across and just fill it in nice and easy. So the reason I did most of these stripes is because when I'm sitting here doing all of these, it does take quite a, it, it can end up taking some time. So I wanted to uh, be able to get all three of these done in a decent amount of time. So I did kind of pre-paint some of these for you. All right, so there are my red stripes. Hi, Mary Kay, how are you? Uh, let's see, Mary Kay says, can we buy the Christmas blanks uh, that are, at, can we buy the Christmas blanks now at the store? Mary Kay, yes, ma'am. Um, everything is already at the store. I 
Uh, Mary and I have already put every anything that is in inventory. So if you're on yardartrus.com and you're in the Christmas blanks and it's telling you that we have whatever in inventory, that means we do have them in stock. Now, I've had a lot of orders come in for the small snowman with the scarf. I think I'm down to one. The C9 bulb, I think I'm down to one. Uh, there's something else I'm almost out of. So if I ha if we have run out of any of the Christmas blanks, we will cut more. It just might take us a week or so. So y'all be patient with us. We can't ever um, seem to have that crystal ball that tells us exactly how much we're gonna need. So when we sell out of stuff really fast, you know, we'll, we'll get some more out. It just might take us a little bit. I was just thinking that, trying to blow dry this, I think I'm gonna set this one aside. Let's work on the flamingos, and maybe by the time we get done with the flamingos, this will be dry where we can finish this one pretty fast. Hi, Lauren. Okay. Flamingos. I did, uh, I actually did two coats of white. The reason I did two is because pastel, or pink is a pastel color, and it can be very see-through if you don't have a good base underneath. So I did two coats of white and then one coat of pink, and we're just gonna hop on in. I'm gonna get Windex. Again, I'm Windexing because my paint likes to separate on me if I have not cleaned off that surface. Especially after it sat around. This only sat around for a couple hours, but you guys would be surprised. In a couple hours, stuff will start to still get, I don't know if it's dust, I, don't, I really don't know what it is that makes that happen, but it happens and it drives me insane. All right, now I am going to, so in our paint palette, let me show you guys, if I can find it. We have two pinks, we have shading pink, we have light pink, which is over here. So we basically only have these two, right? We have a light and we have a dark. So what I actually already have done is I mixed the two together and I almost call this like a Pepto paint. I thought I, here, here it is, this one's perfect. This is a good thing to show you guys. So anytime that you guys are seeing me kind of mix a color together, I'm just trying to find a color that's kind of in the middle. So I'm calling this one Pepto paint. So here's that light, here's the almost Pepto. It's just a mixture of light pink and shading pink. So the Pepto kind of color pink is the one I'm going to use to shade because we're going to use the dark pink to outline. So then that way you have three different tones of pink on here. Count that. Grab a spoon. I haven't used this color in a while, so it's already separated and kind of nasty. Oh, there you are. No, that's not the right one. These, um, all of these different interchangeable pieces, I end up using a ton of different colors. It's hard to keep up with all of them. All right, now I need a little water. Get some water added in here and dripping water on my flamingo. Now, when I'm shading, y'all, I do add some water. I don't add a lot. I just kind of add enough, um, I'd say almost like a, maybe a, a stew, maybe a little thicker than a stew consistency. I just want it thinned out long, uh, enough that I can get some long fluid strokes out of it. So I'm gonna use my number 12, this one's a crafter's choice uh, shader. I'm just loading up that corner. And I'm basically just gonna set that corner down up here at the nose and pull that brush all the way to the tip of the tail. Now, I was able to get all the way to that tip of the tail because I added a little water to this paint. Sometimes it don't work that way, and um, I have to, you know, obviously go back and load a little bit faster. Boop. So two strokes so far, and I have the entire perimeter of that flamingo shaded. This is exactly why I love to add the water. Come in and just get a little bit of pink on the, your wing and just basically repeat that same exact thing over here. Start at the nose, go all the way to the tail. One fluid stroke. 
exactly what I'm trying to go for here. And then I'm just going to use kind of what I already have left in that brush. I still got enough in here. There you go. You got some shady pink. Hi, Deidre. Hi, Carol. How are you, ladies? So glad you're here. Now, I'm going to wipe off this excess. I don't have a whole lot of excess in here. And I'm just going to kind of come in, just do a couple little swish lines. I'll leave it like that. This one's really small, so it's easy to kind of go overboard and do a little too much. And I don't want to do that. So let me move that. Cap that Pepto Pink. And grab the blow dryer right quick. I just really need it dry enough that I don't start mixing the paint whenever I grab my strip liner. Hi Deidre, hi Libby, I didn't even see you hop in. How are you my dear? Since you make it look so easy. Libby, a lot of practice, the three P's. Practice, patience, perseverance. You gotta have those three P's whenever you're, especially when you're trying to learn a new hobby. And something I've learned, uh, definitely especially in the last like year or so, Comparison is a thief. So when you're working on your stuff, don't compare yourself to anybody else. You are you. Your paintings are supposed to turn out the exact way that you paint them because they're yours. And if you're trying to do a painting that looks exactly like mine or like Mary's or like anybody's, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it makes you feel really defeated. And so a lot of times, and for y'all for years, I've always compared myself wanting to be able to paint like my mom or wanting to be able to paint something like Victoria painted. And I think I finally just came to the realization, you know what, I'm painting it the way I'm painting it and that's the way I paint and that's just fine. And it doesn't have to be like everybody else's. And guess what, nobody else has to like it. It's all good. <laughs> So just take it from me and be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace and keep on practicing. And you are right where you are supposed to be. All right, y'all. I'm trying to let me see. What did I out? I outlined that in shaving paint. Yeah. Just want to make sure I am doing what I'm supposed to be. Because y'all, by the time I get around, like I painted those samples like a month ago. So by the time I actually start doing my live. I don't even remember what I did, so I have to continuously look back. Hi, Carol. How are you? So glad you're here. What are y'all up to today? I have, uh, I've just been painting. I've been actually working on um, plaid, polka dot, and striped pumpkins for fall time, like our painted stuff for our customers. And uh, I don't know if y'all, those of you that were here Last year for our fall blanks, we did a triple stack pumpkin that was like a hit. Everybody loved them. And all of the customers were like, are you going to sell any triple stack pumpkins? And I was like, no, that's a lot of work. Uh, well, of course, this year I ended up making them a little bigger and I'm just going to charge more money for them. Uh, but I did some triple stack that are um, plaid, polka dot, and striped. And so that's what I've been working on today. What are you guys painting or what are y'all doing today? I don't know about down in Pearland, uh, but up here in Conroe, it's turned out to be a really pretty day. Sun's shining. It's getting nice and toasty out there. All right, y'all, I'm coming in. I'm using, still using the Royal Gold number four script liner. Literally, every time I have a script liner in my hand, it's the same exact brand. Which this brush, I've actually been working, this is a newer brush, I've been trying to get it broken in. So look Debbie, it's still straight. Well, pretty straight. <laughs> it's not the bent one that I've had for months. I've, uh, my bent one is kind of, it's doing the V on me where it's separating in the middle of the bristles. And so uh, by the time my brushes start doing that, that means they pretty much need to go in the garbage can. So I've been, um, Trying to break in some of these new brushes and I'm working on fall and Christmas stuff to try to get ready for our busy season. So I'm like really, really behind. Like really behind y'all. And uh, 
my painted pieces are kind of like the bread and butter. It's what helps me to pay all the bills. And um, typically by this time I already have, you know, like inventory in stock and I have pretty close to nothing in stock uh, as far as my painted stuff. So I'm kind of feeling that fire getting lit underneath me going, okay, girlfriend, it's time to, uh, you know, get your big girl britches on and step up to the plate and start getting some stuff done. Oh, that came out a little thick. It's the nice thing about, uh, you don't like something when it's wet, take it and wipe it off. How do y'all think my clothes have gotten so caked in paint? Wipe it on off. All right, now eyeballs I did in black. All right, so we got that outlined in shading pink. We'll wash that brush out and we'll switch over to black and just do the eyes and the beak and then our. Uh, add a little bit of white at that point. Where is my lid? Ah, it's hiding from me. Add a little bit of white and then this guy will be done. Kind of loading and almost offloading. So I don't get a really thick line on these eyeballs. Of course, this one comes out thin and this one comes out really thick. That would be how it goes. So now I gotta just kinda even these out. Oh well. Okay, on the beak, let's see. We got this one is all black. Since it's such a tiny little space, guys, this is one of those things I don't even worry about base coating. I just use my script liner. Let your script liner do the work. You got black done now. Hi, Darlene. How are you? Got that black done. I'm going to cap the black, get a little bit of white, and then the flamingo will be done. I'm going to switch back over and uh, get our flag done, too. Y'all, anytime I'm getting that white, I basically, like, really load that brush. By the way, this is very watery. You see it dripping? That's how I like it. And then I basically offload to where I'm like, when I hold my brush up, no paint's gonna drip out of it. And then from there, I kind of almost just kind of set that brush down very light and then kind of pick it up and just move around. Now right here, I'll just kind of very lightly go. Same thing, just repeat, same exact over here. I find sometimes that those side effects, or side effects, uh, 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 <laughs> the sound effects help my brush strokes. So now this, my nose is really wet, but I'll just do this just to show you. It needs to really dry before I try to come in, but I'm just gonna do one little swipe right there on the nose. So there is your uh, flamingos. Those are completely done. On these, I had two coats of white as my base, I, <clears throat> or as my prime coat. I base coated with uh, light pink, and then I shaded with a mixture of light pink and your dark pink, and then I outlined with my dark pink. Now, the dark pink, we, we refer to it as shading pink, but I actually shaded with a mixture of the dark and the light. So there's your flamingos. Now, I'm gonna just leave the white on my brush, and let me grab our sunflowers. Remember how our sunflowers needed some um, highlights? Let's go ahead and get the highlights on there right quick. Now on our sunflowers that we did earlier, I'm just going to kind of come in on the outside of the petal 
I loaded that brush and offloaded, so I don't have a lot in here. I'm gonna just come in on the outside and just bring some white down into the flower. This is very light, very wispy. Honestly, you could probably barely see it, but I do think that, especially if you're looking up close, it just helps it to really pop. To me, your piece is never finished unless you have some white on there. That's really that one thing that you don't even know it until you start to do it and you're like, oh wow, that really brings everything together. You just gotta have white on everything, unless you have white as the base. Like a snowman, then he obviously he's the snowman doesn't really need highlights, but everything else on the snowman would. There is your white highlights on your sunflower. So now our sunflower uh, interchangeable is finished. Only one we got left to finish is our flag. Now, I'm gonna keep this white out while I have it. Uh, notice I have that shading that came over top of some of my stars. So let's clean that up because I did use a script liner when I painted these stars. Remember I told you guys uh, that Pretty much everything except for the blue, I used a script liner to do. So I kind of just load a little bit of paint into that tip of the brush. I don't have a whole lot in here. And there are etched lines on here. So I kind of just set it into those etched lines and just pull that brush through. show you guys how I do this with a script liner. So I don't have a whole lot of paint loaded in here right now. First thing I do is almost just set it down and just kind of go put that brush inside of those lines and just fill in the lines of like the triangles. All those points. Set that brush down and pull it through. Now that I kind of filled in all of those points, that's when I try to come in and just fill in the center. Ta -da! That is how I did all of these stars, just using my script liner. Now, I'm done with the white. Actually, no, I'm not done with the white. I, I don't know if you guys can see this. I made a boo-boo right here. And I accidentally let my red get out of get out of hand on me, and it kind of went outside that line. So I went to clean it up and just made a big mess. So I, at that point, now I'm kind of just coming in to clean it up. I really don't clean up my boo boos until I get towards the end, because you know I make a lot of boo boos. That way I can just clean it all up at once. All right. So now we're gonna switch to black and do some just very light outlining. Hey, Aunt Paula, how are you? All right, switching to black. We're almost done with these, y'all. I'm gonna get this brush loaded. And I'm just kinda almost set it down into that uh, etched line and just pull it on through. Now, right here on this pole, this pole is so, so thin. So I'm not gonna try to go on the outside line, like out here. I'm just really gonna stay right there on the inside. Now on the actual flag, I'm not gonna outline each stripe because I have a thick hand. So whenever I'm outlining, if I were to outline every individual stripe, I have a feeling that the white would be maybe about this tall. So I don't do that. What I am gonna do is just do, I'm trying to make sure I'm following my, what I've already done before. I'm gonna do a little black stripe right here on the blue. And then from here, all I'm really doing is just the perimeter. And then where there's these, um, the folds in the flag. 
I'll add a black stripe on the folds just to make those more um, defined. So right here, you can see your fold. I'll bring one black line in through there. Trying to see how that goes. Ah, it does, okay. Just making sure. Y'all, I'm second guessing myself over here of exactly where that goes. Notice that first stripe I put down, I'm really just doing it very light. That's just kind of teaching, I almost do that stripe first to kind of get my hand prepared of what direction it needs to go in. And then I kind of come in and thicken it up just a little bit. And we'll do the same right here. because I just feel like because those folds of the flag are black, I just don't feel like it looks complete without doing a light uh, perimeter outline with that black. If you have a much steadier hand and you can keep it on that fold and, and do a good stop at the edge, you don't really have to do the black on the outline. I mean on the perimeter. But me, I don't feel like I can ever keep that or allow my brush to stop in the right spot. Like I always come up a little too high and I'm like, ah, I have to finish the line because it already starts to, you know, create a line right there. Now right here is almost like a little fold. Wipe down here. Did I do that? Right? Oh, I guess I'm just, I was, that's why it looked weird. I missed that little bitty spot right there because I was like, what is going on? Here we go. Ta-da! There is your American flag. All right, so let's talk about colors. Do a quick review right quick. Um, I did two coats of white as my base on this guy. From there, I did brilliant blue up here on uh, underneath the stars. I uh, shaded the brilliant blue with navy blue. And then uh, my flagpole is gray, number 24. And then from there, I just used, uh, I, I think I said red on my stripes, obviously. <laughs> but I used just black on my outline and uh, white on my stars. And that is it for your um, flag. Y'all, this uh, flag sells for $14. Let me see what our, our sunflowers. I don't have the price on this one. Let me see if I have it on this one. No, of course I don't. My flamingos are 13, so I'm going to say, I know the flag's 14. I think the sunflower and flamingo sells for 13. They're all sold separately. That way nobody has to be tied into purchasing every piece that goes with this. So I did post a link for um, the blanks of these interchangeable pieces that we painted today. If you are looking for the tutorial of the truck, I painted it last week on this page. Yard of the Rest Painters in the Making. <laughs> Excuse me. It's probably also on our YouTube channel by now. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but all of our past videos that we've recorded are on our YouTube channel. It is Yard Art R Us on YouTube, so you can find it there as well. And then once we have the videos recorded, we also go back into our website and put them in the listings there too. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I am going to be back live on Friday doing the whimsical stockings with the plaid, polka dot, and stripes. So I hope you guys can catch me on Friday. I'll try to get, get make sure I post on Friday and just let you guys know like time frame of when I will be live. So Friday will be the next time I get to see everybody. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you soon. Bye, you guys.